Create perfect veins in half the time, no tablet needed. I'm Abby Sparza with PhotoManipulation.com and today we'll be looking at how to create fast and easy veins in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like and if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put up five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. Now let's take a look at what we have here. I have another quick but fundamental trick that everyone should have in their Photoshop tool belt, if it's not there already. It's how to create an instant veiny texture from scratch, no stock or brushes or pen tablet needed. I do consider this a foundation effect, uh, meaning it's never the end effect, but instead a solid foundation to start with and then work from. But let's just get into it, starting with creating a new canvas that is 3000 by 3000 pixels. Let's go to Filter, Render, Clouds. And right after, uh, Filter, Render, Difference Clouds. You can kind of see how this already might be looking a little uh, veiny. Before we test it out though, we do have to do a bit of editing. First, we need this texture to go from black to a gray color. I, I used to do this using curves, so that is an option, but now to save even more time, I just create a white fill layer below the texture, I'll bring the textures layer down to 50% opacity, and then merge the two layers together. Then we can finish off with some brightness contrast, bringing up the brightness to 50 and the contrast to 100. This can and will change, uh, but we'll touch on that a bit later on. Next, we are going to add some rough coloring using hue saturation, just by checking colorize, which will turn the texture red by default. You are probably going to change this later, in fact, it's pretty much guaranteed. It's just nice to have a base color. Now we can drag and drop our texture onto the subject. The layer setting will change not only from subject to subject, but from body part to body part. But a good starting point tends to be a layer mode of color burn set to around 60 to 70 percent opacity. Add a layer mask, fill it with black by inverting uh, with Control I, and then mask in your veins. Once you have some veins laid, you can then use hue saturation to adjust the veins' colors. Just play with your sliders until you get a shade you're happy with, something that gels with your subject's skin. You can also add a hint of a Gaussian blur if you find your veins are a bit too sharp and not matching the depth of your subject you are applying them to, or even just to make them appear more subtle. Adjust the opacity as needed, of course, as well. Now, this is just one kind of vein uh, type. Let's do a quick rundown of a few more potential variations. Remembering that color really doesn't matter. A blue and purple are going to be what most of your veins end up being, but I personally like to export or save them in red. It really does not matter. Our second texture is going to be 6000 by 6000, so double the size of our first. I am going to uh, filter render clouds, and then filter render difference clouds, just as before. And then that's it. This is a great texture for creating a base of very subtle veins that your more defined veins will go on. Drop the texture, size it, set the layer mode to soft light, bring the opacity down to 25 to 50% or so. The lower end tends to be better in my experience. And then create a black mask and paint in your veins just as we did with the first texture. You can adjust the brightness and contrast so it gives you the best neutral lighting. Since we are working on a soft light layer, you don't want the white areas of the texture to brighten things too much. These veins work amazing on hands and replicate that veiny look some people get when they are very cold or even sickly. You can duplicate the layer, give it a fresh black layer mask, and then enhance some areas if you want that effect to be more intense in certain areas. On to texture number three, another 6,000 by 6,000 canvas, and then filter, render, clouds, and filter, render, difference, clouds. That's always going to be your starting point. 
Now this time, let's image adjustments curves and bring the bottom anchor to about the midway point, a bit higher even, and then the top anchor way to the left. Again, we can do the old image adjustments hue saturation colorize, and then drag and drop the texture and blend. Set to color burn and at a opacity of around 70%, this texture will get you those really nice defined veins that look close to the surface of the skin. I love these for the whites of the eyes, uh, fingernails, and most everywhere, really. I just make sure to pinpoint them and make sure they make sense, if that makes sense. Adjust the color, just like with all the textures, and if you find you're getting really heavy black looking areas, just adjust the brightness to be 20 to 40 or so higher. That should knock most of that out while keeping the veiny goodness intact. Again, add some slight Gaussian blur to help blend things if needed. Uh, sometimes just literally a 0.5 blur will do wonderful things. That is just three variations of a texture that has literally limitless variations. A mess with the contrast, brightness, hitting render difference clouds more than once will give you a different result each time and will kind of compact. Play with different blending modes when blending colors, and obviously these textures are meant to be layered and combined. You can edit the textures themselves using a paintbrush, painting white to erase and using a medium to light gray to add veins, uh, hand painting them in essentially. You can warp and shape them, really get creative and experiment. But I think that about does it for today, at least. If you want even more skin effects, however, check out my How to Paint Fantasy Skin tutorial. Or if you want to see me use layer modes to create a sugary sweet portrait effect, you can watch the making of Lollipopped. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time.